Hey everybody. <clears throat> so let's talk tulip bees. Um, I'm from central Minnesota. A lot of tulip bee lakes around here. Um, tulip bees and Cisco are the same thing, but tulip bees and whitefish are not the same thing. I always get that question asked with, to me a lot. So truth is, no, they are not. Um, anyway, so targeting tulip bees, it's late ice here in Minnesota and like you know other states. And late ice means tulip bee fishing is turning on big time. So I'd like to show you my setup that I use for targeting tulip bees. I have here a 36 inch Yogi Custom Rod light action, 13 long stem reel, six pound test, cast master, spoon, salmon color works also. 12 to 14 inch fluorocarbon dropper, this is a Seaguar, and then a four millimeter jig with a white viper or a wax worm. Soft plastics, as you know, you ain't gotta replace them every single time. All right, so that's my setup, anyway. And places to target these tulipies. Um, deep holes. If you go on lake surveys and look around and you see a lake that has tulipy in it, if you wanna target the tulipies, you need to go and fish that deep hole or fish around you know the edge of that hole or basin um, if you can find one that's out in front of a you know a river that flows in or something or flows out that's even better and the best time to fish them is generally daybreak until 10 or 11 o'clock or even not even that that late in the day um, they're generally a morning fish but there's some lakes where they will bite all day long I know Leech Lake they do um, Lake of the Woods they do you catch them you know when you're walleye fishing um, these smaller bodies of water, though, they seem to want to tar or want to specifically bite during the morning. You might catch them all day long. They just aren't not biting as fast as they would in the morning. Um, I'm on a lake here that's known for tulipy fishing in uh, the lakes area, and I actually got out here a little later than I'd like. I got out here, you know, I got out here about 11 o'clock. So anyway, we're gonna use this dropper. We're fishing anywhere from like 75 to 85 feet in this hole right now so we're gonna see if we can get you guys a couple tulip bees mm. here I got one a good smoker. Ooh, oh, I got him. Here we go. Just a little rod tip, Bob. All it takes. That fish there bit at 65 feet. See, he's got a bunch of buddies with him. <clears throat> Just jigging that spoon up and down. And you watch the attitude of the fish, fish change and they just tear after it usually. There's quite a few of them down there actually now. There we go. There's a really nice looking fish. Good spot to hook that fish right in the tip of the snout. And that's what those tubies look like. There's a really nice one, no bites or nothing on that one. Those fish, they fight like crazy and they're actually a very beautiful fish. And it seems like year after year, more and more people are after them. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's my four millimeter jig with that white viper on it. A lot of people use wax worms, but there's no need because it's more of a reaction strike than anything. There we go. That one, 
And that one just come up and popped it. You know, they were chasing that up and down like crazy. And then all at once is like the whole group decided that they just didn't want part of it anymore because I missed them once or twice. Hopefully I can get them without get them all totally wrapped up in my deucer. See him down at the bottom of the hole there. Here it comes. I'll get the deucer out of the way there, Scotty boy. He's not going nowhere, it doesn't look like anyway. Oops. Come on there, bud. There we go. Here's a real nice one, you know, for this lake anyway. I get I get 90% of my fish hooked right by the tip of the, the nose or the snout there. There's a real another real nice one. Get a measurement quick on this guy too. Pinch, pinch that tail. This guy's 14 and a quarter, 14 and a half, which is a really good smoking fish. Um, it's also a good, I mean, good eating one. The, the really bigger ones, you can get more meat off of them for deep frying. And they are a fantastic tasting deep fried fish, by the way. So, there's that. Don't go back in the water there, bud. I'm just going to give you a close up of this. There's a Castmaster spoon. I got a little swivel on here. This is one of those S Pro. Swivels they cost a million dollars, but they're really nice. <laughs> so I got a snap ring on top and bottom swivel. So when I pull this, this line does not twist up a million times. Here's my dropper. That is six pound cigar fluorocarbon, and then there's my jig. It's four millimeter, made by Clyde Morgan over three northern jigs. I don't know if I said that or not earlier, but anyway, sweet. So we got some tulipies today. Um, so I'm going to show you. You've seen them on the video, but here is your general size tulipie. This tulipie here, I think, was 14 and a half inches long, which is a great smoking fish. Tastes fine. You can get meat off this. They do deep fry very well. Nice white meat. Um, you should bleed them first. You know, you cut the gills, put them in a bucket of water. Um, the meat turns out a little bit uh, better tasting, I think. But there you go. That is just an, a decent sized tulipie. Now I'll show you. Um, actually, I was at someplace else this morning, tulipie fishing at a different lake, and the tulipies over there are just monstrous. And I only caught one, but so size difference. See that? 14 and a half. And this one was like 20 and a half or 21 inches. And this two will be weighed almost four pounds. It was like 3.90. So that is what a massive, absolutely massive two will be looks like. And no, once again, not a white fish. Um, the difference between the two will be and the white fish is the mouth, actually. If I recall, uh, on white fish, the, you see on the two will be, the tip of the, the snout is, is actually back off from the mouth. And with the white fish, the tip of the snout actually comes over, hooks over the bottom jaw. But they do look very similar. Um, if you ever are questioning it, Google it, you should be able to find it out. But anyway, that's how I catch two of these. Um, I'm gonna do a short video for you guys also quick on how to clean them for the smoker, all right? All right, quick video on how to clean a tulipy. Doesn't matter if they're big or small, this is how I clean them for the smoker. I prefer an electric knife. You just cut the head off. Like so, and then you find that spine and you go just above it. Go all the way down through the rib cage. Once you get to boat to the end of the tail, go through and out. All right, 
And all you do is you peel all this stuff out of here. And these, these bigger fish like this, they don't like to lay flat, so I like to make a little slit down the middle too. It'll make them lay flat. Take all that out, like so. Throw it away in the bucket over here. Then the final part <clears throat> I do is clean it out real good. Okay, I got a spray nozzle here, wash the fish out and get this, the, the, the air bladder, where the air bladder and stuff is at. Just scrape all this, all this red stuff out. Pull that out of there. All the red stuff, get it out, flip it around. With a spoon it only takes, you know, a few seconds. Especially if you get good at it. There you go. That's all it takes. Hopefully you guys can see that and it's not too dark. But anyway. So now, now this fish is ready for, for the brine. If you want to put it in a smoker or I take mine to a local meat market and they smoke them for pretty cheap. A dollar or so a fish and you can't beat that. But anyway, that's how I catch and process my tulipies. So, get out and get you some. <laughs>